morning when I was proud to say that, and I'm afraid I can't really say that, that I'm proud to say that uh, uh, anymore. Um, I don't speak for GPs, um, I speak for myself. Um, I'm s and, 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 and be aware that I am not the only GP in Ireland who's very upset about what's happening to our families, what's happening to our children, what's happening to our society, and what's happening to our, to our lives. I'm not the only doctor in Ireland who's very upset. But, but medicine is a, is, a, is a dangerous place at times, and when you speak out, you're, you're very likely to feel that. The ire of the Irish media, of people on RTE and the Irish Times, and they can be dangerous and destructive to your family. So I am, I am an angry man, and that's why I'm standing here today because I'm angry. Um, and look, be before we get, before we lose the root of ourselves, I'm also angry at myself for being angry be because. Because anger is dangerous. Anger, anger and social division is what this government has foisted upon the people of Ireland. We are angry. I am angry at what my children are expected to do. I'm angry at what I'm expected to do. And I'm angry at what's happened to our country and what continues to, to happen to our country. I resigned from the Irish Medical Council. I was appointed to the Medical Council by Minister Simon Harris because of what happened in the Irish nursing home. The people who have died in the Irish nursing homes, they died in their 80s, their, their 70s, their 90s. They were the people who built what we see around us and they built it at a time when there was nothing. They sacrificed, they worked when there was nothing and they deserved so much better, but they weren't given it. They weren't given the very, very basics and at the outset of this crisis, it was all about protecting them. That's what it was supposed to be about. Well, when the virus arrived in Ireland, and the nursing homes closed their doors and said, we'll try to protect the people. Minister Harris said, no, open your doors, you're wrong. NPET said, open your doors, you're wrong. But they didn't listen. They kept their doors closed. When the nursing homes pleaded with the government and asked them to provide us with PPE, provide us with oxygen, many of those private nursing homes were told, you're a private entity, buy your own. And when they tried to buy their own, there was none available. It was taken by the government. Used up, provided for the hospitals, in the nursing homes. When, the, when they desperately needed nursing staff, the nursing staff were sequestered into the hospitals to prepare for the surge. For three weeks, when nursing home residents desperately needed to be tested, when people were being transferred, patients transferred from the hospitals into the nursing homes to make way for a surge that never arrived, these people were transferred into the nursing homes without even being tested. And when they arrived in the tests in the nursing homes, they were told, you can't be tested because there's a shortage of tests and the tests were withdrawn from the nursing home sector throughout Ireland for three weeks at the height of this crisis. But the government wants to tell us that these people were looked after, that these were mistakes that happened everywhere. Well, I'm sorry, that's not true. On planet Earth, next to Canada, Ireland has the highest rate of nursing home deaths in the world. And if that is not enough, to allow those people the dignity of a full, independent, public inquiry, then we are not living in a democracy. So yes, I am an angry man. And I speak here as an angry man. I don't speak for the doctors. I don't speak for the government. I speak for myself and my own experience. And I speak for us. And I speak as a father. Because I have four children. 
And if this government wants me and wants my wife to send my children into a school where they can't bring their lunchbox, where they have to wear masks, where they have to distance from each other, where mothers, the mothers of these children have to deal with the stress of going to work and providing for their families and then coming back and picking up their children from school on odd days or this day or every day and not allowed to bring lunch boxes and not allowed to, to enjoy a basic normal upbringing, a basic normal experience of childhood. Please don't tell me there's not something seriously wrong with our society if we allow that to happen. Children do not die from COVID-19. Ireland, we know, we all know, the doctors know, COVID-19 is dangerous. It's dangerous to elderly people and people with underlying conditions. Well, in Ireland, we've got the highest rate of children with cystic fibrosis in the OECD. We've got the highest rate of children in Ireland with asthma. Two very significant underlying lung conditions and not one dead child. So, are we going to buy into this ridiculous narrative? Are we going to continue to buy into this narrative? No, no, we shouldn't buy into this narrative. And And why are we being asked to wear masks? What is the purpose of the mask? Well, as far as I'm concerned, the purpose of the mask is a distraction. It's to do exactly what we're unfortunately compelled to do. It's to have us talking about masks and not talking about the people in this country who are neglected and have been denied the decency of an independent public environment. I am indeed, and I will repeat it, I am an angry man. I am most certainly an angry man. And as time goes by and as the truth is exposed, there will be more angry people and more angry people. But when the Oireachtas, when the Oireachtas can have 80 people at a hotel playing golf and having dinner, when those people can include TDs from this country, ministers from this country, Members of the Senate from this country, Supreme Court judges from this country, all brazenly flouting the guidelines that they expect us to take seriously. I would ask all of those individuals, who's wearing the tinfoil hat now? Where is your conspiracy now? So when we do engage in the dialogue about masks and when we ask ourselves whether it's right, right or whether it's wrong or whether it makes sense, it doesn't make any sense. It makes absolutely no sense to have to spend nine euros in order to enjoy a pint. What's going on here is absolutely laughable and it has no scientific or medical basis whatsoever. And I'm not saying that as a doctor. Forget about what I have to say. In Dáil Ireland there is a COVID-19 committee established by the Irish government to look into what's been done wrong and what's been done right. And the COVID-19 committee commissioned an independent expert from the Oxford University in London who has told them, and this is available on the government.ie website, on Oireachtas television, their own independent experts have told them that masks are a total waste of time. The government's own independent expert has told them that cloth masks that people are wearing around their face are not just a waste of time, but they're actively, they're dangerous. They're filthy, they're dirty, and they're dangerous. 
don't, don't, please don't accuse me or say to me that I'm speaking out against the government because that's the government's own independent advice. So when we talk about guidelines and when we talk about the flouting of guidelines and when we talk about the, about the care of the, of the elderly people, we need to be angry. But we have to be careful because anger is dangerous. And when we're angry and when we're talking about masks, we're doing what they want us to do. We're distracted. We're distracted from the people who have died and we're distracted from the futures of our children. We need to use our democracy. We need to call Micheál Martin to task. He needs to reconvene the dog and not dismiss, dismiss the notion that this is insignificant or this is something that the government doesn't have to face up to. The government is going to have to face up to things. They're going to have to face up to all of us. And eventually, if we stay strong and if we stay fearless, the government will have to face up to the truth. Remember, we have nothing to fear except fear itself. Thank you. speakers here today and to all of you as well for being so patient. It's been a long day but it's been an amazing day of information, clarity and empowerment. So let's take that energy guys and use it to spread this movement. Yeah, and it's down to each one of us if we want to create change, we have got to make that change. It's not just going to be left to who's on the stage here or any groups. Each one of us has to empower ourselves. Do what's necessary to create the change. Thank you all again and wish you a safe journey. Well, that's not fantastic. I want to thank all of our speakers, the organizers, and every single one of you that came here today. We were going to go for a little walk, but we've been reliably informed that it might be a little bit dangerous. So for, for the health and safety of everybody here, there are children, mums, daughters. No, not today.